This was how planes looked like in the 1960s, and this is how they look today. Although the photos have evolved considerably, the aircraft itself looks more or less the exact same. Of course, as any avgeek will eagerly point out, the 4th generation newer 737 MAX features plenty of changes, from much bigger engines to newer winglets to fly-by-wire. But the overall design of the aircraft remains virtually unchanged. In fact, pretty much every commercial aircraft today is, at its most fundamental level, a tube with wings and a tail. This is in stark contrast to the first half of the 20th century, during which planes went from looking like this to this. But is the tube and wing airliner that we all know and love really the most efficient design out there? What if airplanes were just flying wings? At first glance, flying wings seem like a radical new concept, but they've actually been around for a pretty long time. The first true flying wing, the N1M, was designed and built way back in 1940 by the pioneer Jack Northrup, who would go on to found Northrop Grumman, one of the world's largest and most influential aerospace companies today. In fact, Northrop Grumman created the only flying wing in existence, the B-2 Spirit, and is currently working on developing the next-gen B-21 Raiders set to enter service in 2027. Now, the idea behind flying wings is actually pretty simple. Just get rid of pretty much everything that doesn't generate lift in order to make the plane as aerodynamically efficient as possible. The fuselage and tail are great for control and stability, but that comes at the expense of higher drag, which in turn leads to higher fuel burn. Flying wings, on the other hand, are not only much lighter, but also have a lower surface area, resulting in massive fuel savings. Thanks to their sleek profile, flying wings like the B-2 are nearly impossible to detect with radar, making them ideal for stealth combat missions. So if flying wings have already proven to be successful in the military, why haven't they been made for commercial flight? Well, for starters, squeezing large numbers of passengers inside a pair of wings is much easier said than done. After all, the B-2 bomber with its two-person cockpit has a wingspan nearly 55 feet longer than your average Boeing 737. Just imagine how ridiculously wide the wings would have to be in order to fit hundreds of passengers. Airports would have to be completely torn down and redesigned to accommodate an aircraft with such an absurdly long wingspan. So pretty much, this would never work. Then does that mean this entire video is just clickbait? No. Just because pure flying wings are doomed to fail doesn't mean we can't modify them. From the behemoth Tupolev Tu-404 to the X-48 Demonstrator, several plane makers have been researching what's known as blended wing body or BWB aircraft. While these planes aren't pure flying wings, they're often mistaken for them, since they look remarkably alike. The only difference being a triangular fuselage section in the middle to accommodate passengers. Unlike a conventional airliner which features distinct wings and fuselage, here everything's morphed into one structure. This means that the entire aircraft generates lift, not just the wings, optimizing the jet for efficiency while at the same time ensuring smoother control and much easier passenger accommodation. Research has shown that BWBs are up to 30% more efficient and eco-friendly than traditional airliners, and produce a lot less noise thanks to having engines mounted in the rear instead of under the wing. Aerospace startup Jet Zero, which received a whopping $235 million from the Air Force to build a BWB demonstrator, has been bold enough to claim that their aircraft will cut fuel consumption in half. However, that's not to say that BWBs don't come with their own challenges. Since these cabins are designed to be shorter and wider, there will be way more seats per row and much less room for emergency exits. So trying to quickly evacuate every single passenger on board during an emergency is going to be pretty difficult. And if you've kept up with the news lately, there's been quite a bit of mid-air emergencies this year. But even if we somehow figure out a way to squeeze enough emergency exits into BWBs, perhaps by adding some in the roof, there's still another major issue with wider cabins. They have a lot more middle seats. Jokes aside, having more seats further from the center of the aircraft means that passengers in those seats are going to feel a lot more vertical motion every time the plane turns. Suffice it to say, not a fun ride. On top of that, pressurizing these cabins is going to be a lot harder thanks to their bizarre triangular shape, which makes it difficult to evenly distribute air between all the passengers. While these are some of the main challenges preventing blended wing aircraft from taking off, pun intended, plenty of unanswered questions still remain. 
like for instance how adding passengers could potentially impact the aircraft's stability. Flying wings are inherently unstable, and the B-2 Spirit was only able to fly thanks to a highly complex computerized fly-by-wire system that automatically adjusts flight controls. Despite all these challenges, one highly ambitious startup, Jet Zero, aims to launch a full-scale blended wing aircraft roughly the size of the Boeing 767 by the end of this decade. They've already gotten permission from the FAA to test their small-scale demonstrator and have even garnered interest from commercial airlines, with Alaska recently announcing a huge investment in the company. Many of the people currently leading Jet Zero were the ones who pioneered the 30 plus years of research into blended wing designs. At the end of the day, aviation has a massive innovation problem. Over the past 50 years, manufacturers have only really changed two things the materials used to make jets, and the engines that power them. Blended wing aircraft could potentially help airlines save billions by massively reducing fuel consumption and carbon emissions, revolutionizing air travel as we know it. So do you think blended wing aircraft could be a viable long-term solution? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below, and as always, if you found this video interesting, subscribe for more.